Hey everybody, Roast Battle League Commissioner Pat Barker here with a very special episode of RBL Weekly. Now you may notice a couple of things. Uh, number one, I'm flying solo this week, and number two, I am not in our normal studio space. Um, this is very much a flying by the seat of the pants, uh, last second replacement kind of thing. Basically what's going on is due to a variety of reasons involving personnel, involving production, involving scheduling. We were unable to get together and record an episode this week the way we normally would. I leave for Austin tomorrow for our latest edition of Roast Battle at the Comedy Mothership. Really looking forward to that. And in the meantime, I wanted to make sure that you guys got the episode that you deserve. You see the top five battles battles from around the world, which by the way, this week's lineup is one of my favorites we've ever had, top to bottom, five through one, there's not a bad battle in the bunch, I'm excited for you guys to see them. Um, we're going through some growing pains on the podcast right now as we move towards our, our studio, wherever that ends up being. If you've been watching from the beginning, you know we've been in a couple spots. Uh, I'm very optimistic about the long-term future of the podcast. We have a, a lot of cool things going, but in the short term, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You got to call an audible. You got to throw your autographed roast battle poster on the wall for ambiance and you got to get into the episode. So uh, the important thing is that the RBL season keeps chugging along as we move towards the November 1st end of season and we find out who will be representing um, the U.S. and the world as we crown a World Roast Champion, and that will happen. That will happen. Head-to-head -head competition, you have my word on that. The podcast uh, in the interim, hopefully uh, next week we're able to get back to normal uh, with Sarah Keller joining me and breaking down the battles. We weren't able to do it this week, and uh, I didn't want to uh, skip a week, and I don't want to waste anybody's time uh, at this point. We got five great battles, so let's just get into them. Uh, I'm just going to toss to the battles as we go, and we're going to start with a city that is currently on the outside looking in. Chicago comes to us this week as third, uh, in third place in the U.S. division, looking up at New York and L.A., trying to grab that second and final U.S. playoff spot, and they had an amazing battle to, to show you guys this week. This is the number five battle, comes to us from Chicago with two of my favorites uh, from out there. This is Jess Misitano versus Max Sorich. Here it is. Everybody, please give it up for the Greek goddess herself, uh, Aphrodiabetes. Hey! Oh, no. Uh, Jess, if Jess was any character from <laughs> Greek mythology, I think she'd be one of those sirens, except when she sings, sailors would jump off the other side of the boat. <laughs> All right. Give it up for handsome Squidward, everybody. Thank you. What the fuck? Give it up for Jar Jar Twinks. <laughs> a GED and a bus pass. Fucking <laughs> 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 mannequin Skywalker. Mannequin <laughs> Skywalker. Two wheels were compliments. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're handsome. <laughs> um, Jess, uh, Jess uh, she doesn't have any kids, and th thank God. Yeah. Um, but if she did, they would for sure have fetal alcohol syndrome. <laughs> not because she, she'd be drinking during her pregnancy, just any guy who's been inside a Jess turns to the bottle quickly. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Uh, Alright, whatever, frat bundy. Uh, <laughs> you look, uh, relax, everybody. You look like you tuck your dick back under your mother's favorite dress. <laughs> She's actually a very funny comedian. She has this one bit that I love uh, where she goes on stage and then for a couple of moments the audience thinks they bought tickets to a drag show. <laughs> hmm. That's funny because you look like a fuckboy with gender dysmorphia. Oh. He looks like his pronouns are, she's, uh, she's legal. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, I don't know, she, uh, she, she kind of has the personality of someone who's molested by their uncle. Yeah, very much so. And the body of someone who molested her uncle. <laughs> very strong gal. <laughs> uh, speaking of, Max is the strong, silent type, ladies. Uh, meaning he's the type to make you strong drinks until you're silent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just looks like 
guy, she volunteers at a soup kitchen just for the free food. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it really puts the manity in humanity. You know? <laughs> I love free shit, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, Max tells women he's emotionally un unavailable, which is just his fancy way of saying he's a ketamine addict. <laughs> Jess, uh, she's moving to Texas soon to uh, continue burning bridges in comedy, and... Uh... Fuck all of you. <laughs> Texas. <laughs> 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 Quit taking your mommy <laughs> issues out on me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, isn't he handsome? He's a handsome <laughs> dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. yeah you're welcome. He's making you up. He's dropped out of college. He's unemployed and he lives with his parents. At least you know he's fucked. Look what he did to his life. <laughs> last joke? Oh, last joke? Oh, yeah, last joke. Okay, uh, Jess, she's a hairdresser. Um, I don't know if you can tell by her everything, but... Um... <laughs> Jessica Misitano, but all I got was a rough hand job and her complaining about her roast battle with a twink. <laughs> I can't confirm anything, but I know bulge when I see one. Oh my God. <laughs> Sincerely, Chris Grieco? What the fuck? <laughs> Mom, and he'd be the son I'd fight dead from an overdose. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Damn, anyone else hard as a rock? Give it up to them. Okay, so that was the number five battle this week coming to us from Chicago. Uh, Jess Misitano, Max Sorich. This is normally where I would break it down, but it feels like a real loser move to do that. Uh, when you're solo and I don't have anyone to uh, sort of debate with or go back and forth with. So I'll leave it at this awesome battle. A lot of fun. Um, love what Chicago's doing. Love this race for the second playoff spot between them and New York. Who will get there? We got about nine weeks left in the season before we find out. Eight or nine. I got I to gotta do the math on that, but it's exciting to watch. And speaking of New York, they're going to pick up a point right now because they pulled off the number four battle this week. This is a... Uh, this is a lot of fun, and uh, it features one of my favorite jokes in a long time. And when you see it, I think you're going to know which one. Um, this is uh, the New York champion, John Ajota, who we've seen on the pod. I have seen him uh, battle in Austin. He's an absolute monster going up uh, against a guy that made a heck of a debut uh, a couple months back, and I haven't seen him since. Uh, I got to meet him in L.A. when he was there recently. Um really promising battler that I'm excited to see more of named Lucas Arnold. So number four battle this week from New York, John Ajota against Lucas Arnold. Here it is. John is Indian and Italian, which means he's suspicious of black people twice. Give it up for the guy that was sitting crisscross applesauce on the floor this whole time. But uh, believe it or not, Lucas is actually one quarter black. So he's got 25% uh, African in his blood and nine inches of African up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jalfrazy Dahmer. Uh, John is such a toxic incel, he gaslights his blow up doll. and makes her feel alive. But, uh... <laughs> Unlike hers. <laughs> Lucas is a uh, TikTok star, or as his African- Facts. Cousin. Yeah. <laughs> or as his African cousins call it, <laughs> but uh... <laughs> That, 
that might be the most racist thing I've ever said. But um, he's amassed he's amassed over 300,000 followers making TikToks, uh, usually of him reacting to whatever viral trend is most exploitable at the time. <laughs> <laughs> he calls himself a content creator. Content, something that only has value by virtue of existing in and of itself. Not art or passion, <laughs> but content. Mm -hmm. Something, uh, you, the, by the virtue of existing, it's real. The, the empty carbohydrate of expression. <laughs> content. Is this the common app application? What the f A hollow word of representing a hollow person, and not, not just because it looks like you don't have any internal organs. But <laughs> There's nothing inside Lucas that makes Lucas Lucas. There's nothing but a void of, of shapeless miasma that's only gains form by the algorithmic ordinance. <laughs> there only within him exists content. In summation, you're gay. <laughs> You said 300,000, it's 2.4 mil, bitch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when John starts a Word document, he writes and deletes the N-word just to get it out of his system. Yeah. My father is, uh, he's Indian, he's an illegal immigrant. Lucas's father is uh, dead. If you want to get rid of my dad, you have to call ICE. If you want to get rid of his dad, you have to call Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you AI-generated Coke user. Uh, doesn't John look like he's about to tell you that there haven't been any Indian school shooters and then just stare at you for a while? what happened, you stitched in a better comic? But uh, <laughs> anyway, listen, in times like these, it's always important you remember what Lucas's dad always says. <laughs> I feel so close to him right now. Uh, <sighs> John knows the exact amount of time to the second that any of you have ever talked to him. <laughs> Your father was a great man. <laughs> he was always very supportive of Lucas's comic career. Even if he had no one to perform to, he always did it, made sure he would pay attention to him, even in the family living room. He always made sure there was always, he always had a stage for Luke. Excuse me, he had stage four leukemia. Uh, <laughs> stage four leukemia. I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> and there it is, the type of content that we thrive on here at the Roast Battle. Not art, not passion, content. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to break down the battles and I'm not, but that joke, uh, hats off to John and Joda, um, to be able to do something that I've never seen, um, in, in 10 years of watching roast battles, uh, very, very impressive. And the way he wrapped it up in the simplest, uh, form of schoolyard bullying possible is just a chef's kiss. Uh, excellent, excellent work. And for that matter, excellent work, uh, for Lucas Arnold. Uh, the fact that John did that joke second. Um, could have really, the way it landed, it could have messed up Lucas for the remainder of the battle, but he stuck in the pocket. He was, uh, throwing some, some haymakers out there. Just a really entertaining overall battle and, uh, I'm a big fan. So now we move to the number three battle this week. And this one comes to us from London. A couple of quick notes on this one. Now, London is the leader in our international division. And I, I feel like it's time that I restate a couple of the rules, because this battle features a London battler versus uh, a battler from Barcelona. Um, but it took place in London, which means 
uh, to reiterate the rules, if you have, if you're, if you're a city and you're hosting the battle and it features one of your battlers, you get all the points for the thing. If it happens on a neutral site, which we've seen a lot at the mothership, if Denver faces the Bay Area in Austin, then Denver and the Bay will split the points. Um, in this case, it's London versus Barcelona, um, and it happened in London, so these three points will go entirely to London. The second thing that's interesting about this battle, and I, I believe this is a first, I'm pretty sure, in the history of Roast Battle all over the world, this was an all-female show, not meaning all the battlers were female, I mean the battlers, the judges, they even had a guest host uh, so that they could uh, they could do an entirely female show, and uh, the first battle they sent me from the event is uh, outstanding, it's a really, really good one. London, the leader in the international division, picking up three more points with the number three battle this week. This is Laura Videv versus Mila Kopayeva. Here it is. Hello. All right, guys, this steroid Barbie is Laura. <laughs> 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 Laura's dad left them and provided her with four siblings. And as a good Bulgarian daughter, she helped to raise all of them and also breastfed all of them. <laughs> I'm jealous he's a disease bitch. Can't move. <laughs> <see. laughs> so this pound land Britney Spears is. <laughs> facts about Mila. Uh, she had a very strained relationship. She had a difficult relationship with her family. And also she used to be a professional Afrobeat and dance hall dancer. <laughs> Which makes her perfectly qualified to be the black sheep of the family. <laughs> My parents are still together, by the way. <laughs> How do you know you haven't seen them? Oh! <laughs> How do you know I haven't seen your dad last night? <laughs> <laughs> so, Ro Laura is here not to talk to you about entrepreneurship courses for gypsy women. <laughs> in Barcelona and she runs a couple of comedy nights there. One of her nights is called Shut Up Bitch Comedy, which is also the most common reaction to her being on stage. <laughs> I know your emotions. Shut up bitch is exactly the words your mom say to you a few minutes after giving birth. <laughs> Laura's got a boyfriend and he loves her, he really loves her because he decided to stay even though he knows that without makeup she looks exactly like Jason Momoa without beard. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly ugly! Knock him dead. Um, so Mila has moved to two different countries for men. She's moved to Finland and to Spain, um, but she's only had two different relationship statuses, long distance and restraining order. <laughs> That's how you keep them. <laughs> okay, um, guys, give it up to Laura. It's It's really brave of you to try doing stand-up comedy when everybody just keeps on staring at your massive head. <laughs> Laura only sleeps with men who use XXL size condoms. Only. Because they are empty. 
they can use it to cover up her ugly head. <laughs> Is currently declining. Oops, sorry. I mean, she's 35. <laughs> so, actually, tonight's a really golden opportunity for her. Um, she's trying to get enough money to freeze her eggs. So, if you can all please scan this QR code, Thank you, you, all, you, you look older than me though. <laughs> so, uh, Laura has a jaw of a nutcracker and an attitude of a dick sucker. <laughs> which, is, which is very confusing for her followers on OnlyFans. <laughs> That was not your best one, I think. <laughs> Stick to Barcelona. Um, so Mill is Russian. They've had a tough year. <laughs> <laughs> they've had a tough year, Russians. You know, they've been they've been abused, they've been mistreated, they've been cut off. Um, luckily for Mila, it's just an average day in the life. Glad <laughs> 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 to know what he was coming to. <laughs> So that was the number three battle this week, Laura Videv versus Mila Kopayeva from London uh, in the all-female event. Just absolutely tremendous stuff. The crowd energy in that one was just off the charts, which I think is oftentimes the deciding factor between uh, a good battle and a great battle, or in this case, a great battle and an amazing battle. Um, really, really love what they're doing there in London. They pick up the three points. Uh, they had a one-point lead over Scotland coming into this week. Scotland has made a real charge thanks to a couple of great battles from the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Now, our next battle comes to us from Scotland. However, Scotland will get none of the points for the exact thing that we talked about before. This is a neutral site battle. Scotland holding uh, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival Roast Battle Tournament and the finalists just happen to not be from Scotland, which means London's own Shalaka Kurup is going to pick up a couple of points for her home city, which means London back-to-back uh, -back putting points on the board here. She reached the finals, and this is just an absolutely insane battle against New York City's Caroline Haynes. So for London and New York, both in the midst of this playoff push, both picking up points from multiple battles this week. Um, and for the record, if anyone's asking why would Scotland submit a battle that didn't have any Scottish battlers in it, I was submitted one that also had uh, some battlers from Scotland. Didn't quite make the cut. This one, however, uh, was absolutely outstanding. Um, it is the finals of the tournament. These ladies have been at Fringe doing 100 shows a day for 100 days or whatever the deal is over there and having to right on the fly for multiple roast battles, and now they find themselves in the finals, and uh, they put on a real show. So, without any further ado, the number two battle this week, splitting the points, London and New York, Shalaka Kurup versus Caroline Haynes. Here it is. All right. Uh, what an honor to be here roasting Velma from Scooby-Doo, and no one should talk to her. I said if no one jerked off to her. <laughs> I'll make sure you guys got that. Okay. Um, Shalaka seems like a teacher that gives students gold stars for coming out as bisexual. <laughs> you know that whimsy art teacher that all the weird kids would eat lunch with? Shalaka seems like she got bullied by that teacher. <laughs> 
this poor abortion Barbie is Caroline Haynes. <laughs> Uh, actually outgrew her nut allergy, kind of in the same way uh, that her face outgrew her forehead. Uh, we're doing forehead jokes, huh? Caroline's forehead is so big! <laughs> Caroline's forehead is so big, I can't tell whether her hairline is receding or her five head is recruiting. <laughs> Just saying, if my, felt, if my face outgrew my forehead, that means I have a small forehead, right? Are we on the same page with that? Okay, I'm gonna go to bed tonight thinking I have a small forehead. Cool. Are you done? Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks for being here, Shalaka. I know you had to take a night off for drawing in your uh, adult coloring books and knitting yourself a boyfriend, so <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, Shalaka seems like she had to take her cousin to prom because her other cousin said no. You know that? <laughs> This diseased cum rag is Caroline Haynes. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline grew up Episcopalian, which sounds like one of the many STDs she has. Uh, she also grew up pole vaulting, uh, which is what manly girls do when they can't become strippers. <laughs> <laughs> Shalaka uh, gets fetishized a lot, um, not by guys with Indian fetishes, but by pedophiles who think she's a little boy. Um, yeah. You know how parents will put like a bow on their baby so people know it's a girl? I think that's what Shalaka's going for with the septum piercing. She's like hoping someone will believe she's not an eight year old. Um, she's so small, she almost passes as one of those like nutrient deprived kids and those like for just two pounds a day commercials, you know, if she were skinnier. <laughs> I have never met a food that Caroline couldn't throw up. Um, <laughs> Once ran, ran a half marathon, which is approximately 13 miles. Approximately 13 can be used to describe a lot of things in Caroline's life, like the number of years she has before she dies of an overdose, or uh, the size of her forehead in feet. God, Chalak is so annoying. <laughs> Yeah. Every time she opens her mouth, an angel loses its boner. <laughs> yeah. uh, American education sucks, so I don't know a lot about Indian history, um, but I'm just assuming that the reason the Brits left India was Shalaka's family was so fucking annoying. Right? <laughs> they were just like, God, uh, fuck this, we don't need spices that badly. <laughs> uh, in the words of Caroline's dad, this is Casper the friendly whore. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Caroline's dad actually left, obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know how they say when you swallow a lot of apple seeds, a little apple tree grows inside of your stomach? Well, Caroline's proof that if you swallow a ton of cum, uh, your dad still doesn't pick up the phone to tell you he loves you. So. I do swallow. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's wrap this up. I think Shalaka has a Harry Potter trivia night to get to or something. Uh, I do! Uh, you guys should all follow Shalaka on Instagram. She's gonna be really big someday if she just keeps eating her vegetables. <laughs> um, seriously though. <laughs> seriously though, follow her. She, uh, she's already got a great career. You can see her on every university brochure in the country. So. <laughs> Caroline hunted when she was hunting for truffles in the forest. Uh, <laughs> Caroline snores, which is inevitable when your nose is so far down your face, it's basically a snout. <laughs> oink oink, bitch. <laughs> I think we're done here. Okay, so that was the number two battle this week. Shalaka Kurup taking the Edinburgh Fringe Festival Roast Battle Tournament Championship. Um, I'm not going to nerd out too much about 
any of the technical stuff. I will say um, I thought they were both outstanding. And as far as the larger picture goes, what Shalaka Karup has done in London this year to me, and we got a lot of season left. We still got two months before the season ends. Um, but she is, if the season ended today, she's my MVP pick. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, not that there haven't been other great battlers. Ryan Nesson here in LA, um, Dan Wicks, Dave Sheehan have been incredible in New York amongst others. Um, you know, Ryan Cullen has single-handedly almost kept Scotland in the race. Um, but for Shalaka, 10 wins, which ranks second in the entire world. We've had over 900 different battlers um, perform this season. Only two of them have reached double digits and wins. She's one of them. She won the London Knockout Tournament. She has now won the Edinburgh Fringe Festival Tournament. Um, and maybe most importantly, she has had six battles ranked on RBL Weekly and put up 15 points for her home city. Uh, excuse me, 13 points. Uh, so she has the most ranked battles, second most points for her city. Um, just absolutely outstanding work from Shalaka uh, as as usual. So um, I'm not the only say for MVP. There will be other people weighing in, um, and there is a lot of season left. But right now, that would be uh, that would be my vote. Okay, so congratulations to Shalaka. Congratulations to Caroline Haynes, who was outstanding um, and uh, really amazing battle. Um, and speaking of amazing battles, we come to the number one spot now. This is an interesting one for me because, frankly, what happens is every Friday. Um, I ask everybody to submit their battles and you get to a certain point in the day where you think you have everything you're going to get and you're putting the list together and I've consulted with the other people who have been voting as well and they watched all the battles and then there's a last second entrant and a lot of times the last second entrants are not that great and you watch it and you say okay well it doesn't I watched it it's not that great we can keep it moving we don't have to change anything not the case here and it was not from one of the current playoff cities. It was not from a city fighting for one of those two spots. It was from a city that, frankly, is in last place, but maybe has shown the most growth of any city, um, certainly of our brand new cities. I'm talking about Denver. Denver um, has not been as well represented recently on RBL Weekly, but their guys have been killing it at the Comedy Mothership. Um, everybody who's come down there has been outstanding. And uh, this battle they just sent me um, through a monkey wrench in things. I had my I had my rankings. We had it all ready to go. And then I had to uh, send out a text, an emergency text. Hey, everybody, watch this. Tell me what you think. And it ends up in the number one spot. Um, this battle features a 15-year-old battler uh, by the name of Noah Ciel going up against a guy we've seen before, one of my favorites, Jake Tupita. It's the number one battle this week. Here it is. Noah, I'm glad to see you made it out tonight. I know you had to forge your mom's signature on a permission slip to get in here. <laughs> you look like you got your fake ID confiscated by a GameStop employee. Uh, uh, speaking of cards, we're actually paying Jake in Pokemon cards tonight. Um, <laughs> Jake, you look like you'd storm the Capitol just because there's a Pikachu in there you need to catch. <laughs> Dog, you can Pokemon go to hell for that one. <laughs> Noah Seal is a gay nerd. <laughs> It's not a joke, I'm just stating the facts, okay? I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up that he's a gay little nerd. All right. Noah came out of the closet and then went right back into his locker. Jake actually peaked in high school, uh, not in popularity, just into the girls' bathroom. Uh, last week. Uh, he was like, I swear, there was a Pokemon in there. <laughs> I was like, I swear, I'm gender neutral. <laughs> no, that's a pretty good joke. I know it must be tough to speak with uh, all those acorns stored in your cheeks. <laughs> you uh, Alvin and the chipmunks looking motherfucker. 
You look like Charlie Brown if he put the football in his ass. <laughs> Jake, you look like you'd be down to drive the trains during holo the Holocaust. Not because you hate the Jews, just because you really like trains. <laughs> Someone's got to keep them on schedule, all right? <laughs> no, you look like you uh, flirt with the other boys at school by looking them in the eyes and sucking on your thumb. <laughs> Jake was actually in Boy Scouts for a very long time because that's the only way he could have sex. Uh... <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Noah Seal is what would happen if Lisa Simpson transitioned. <laughs> saxophone for school shooting jokes. Uh, speaking of, uh, Jake, you look like you'd try to scoot, shoot up my school, but you'd get too uh, involved in your adult coloring books. Uh, you look like you'd write your manifesto in crayon. <laughs> Jake, you look like you still breastfeed from whoever programmed you. <laughs> Noah is a prepubescent boy. <laughs> the only time his balls have dropped is when he's playing outfield on his Little League team. <laughs> Oh man, do I dare put it in double overtime? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Double overtime. Fuck yeah, we got Jake going first in double overtime. You know what time it is. Battle, battle, battle. Let's fucking go. Fight. Noah's got new age parents. His parents like to give him cocaine because that's the only way they can get him to take his baby aspirin. <laughs> I'll make it short. We both have to get picked up by our moms, so... The number one battle of the week, Noah CL, Jake to Pizza, a double overtime thriller. Um, one of the most fun battles I've seen in a long time. Um, on the topic of Noah, uh, I was recently in the Bay Area judging the battles for them at a Cobb's Comedy Club. And there was a standout performer there who was also 15 years old named Luke Abranches. Um, I'm hoping we get to see his battle sooner rather than later here on the pod. Um, there's gotta be a way, uh, as far as like, I hesitate to call it a dream match because that's really weird as a grown man to be like, if I could just get these two fucking 15 year olds in a room together, I get it. I get it. It's weird, but both absolute monsters in the roast battle world, um, would love to see them battle, uh, one day and it doesn't have to be any day soon. They've got a long bright career of making fun of people ahead of them, both uh, absolute animals. And uh, for Jake to pizza to go toe to toe with Noah um, and put on one of the, the greatest, uh, most high energy battles of the entire season. Um, well done, both of you guys. Uh, outstanding work. Um, let's take a second to look at the standings before we get out of here. Um, in America, it was a big week for New York City. They picked up the four points as a result of the one and a half battles. They move closer to L.A. L.A.'s lead has been cut to four points, um, which, you know, you could make up in a week. 
similarly, Chicago falls to five back, which you could also make up. So out of those three teams, I think that they are going to continue fighting uh, for the two playoff spots for the remainder of the season. Denver playing a little bit of a spoiler, putting up those five points and moving up to 29 it seems a little bit uh, unlikely that they will be able to re-enter the playoff chase, but nothing is uh, nothing is impossible. Unlikely and impossible are two different things. Denver certainly has the talent. Can they make a last-second run at it? We will find out. Um, and over on the international side of things, it was uh, business as usual for London, who had seen its lead shrink to one point. They pick up another five this week. They extend their lead. They are now up 40-34 to 34 over Scotland with Tokyo. Still hanging out in that third spot at 29 points. It'll be interesting to see what happens there and which two teams find themselves competing for the first ever RBL World Championship. Well, we did it. Uh, It was less than ideal. Uh, I hope to be back next week. I don't like this whole thing, staring directly into the camera and, uh, you know, tossing uh, to battles. I would much rather be breaking them down and having fun doing that and, uh, you know, hopefully we get back to that. But in the meantime, I really, really appreciate everybody tuning in. We're building to something really cool and special here. And uh, I'm excited that you guys are along for the ride. So until next time, uh, follow me on Instagram at RBL Um And uh, thanks. Thanks again. Really appreciate all you guys out there. And we'll be back next week with more RBL Weekly.